Dopo questa prima ingressione marina nel Triassico... After the first Triassic marine ingression, the entire alpine area rises and emerges once again. An immersion implies erosion. The outcome are these reddish conglomerates called Richthofen conglomerates. A new gradual marine ingression follows, involving not only the Dolomites, but the southern calcareous Alps all the way to Lombardy. Inizialmente il mare poco profondo, e questo avviene non soltanto su tutte le Dolomiti, ma su tutte le Alpi calcaree, quindi fino... Here in the Dolomites, the resulting unit is the Contrin formation, deposited on a wide uniform carbonate platform where water was only 1 to 3 meters deep. In pratica con 1, 2, 3 metri d'acqua al massimo, molto uniforme, quindi dovete pensare... Extensive prairies of calcareous algae produced large amounts of calcium carbonate that after sedimentation was often replaced by dolomite, a calcium magnesium carbonate. Carbonato di calcio che poi localmente viene trasformato in Dolomiti. Dopo questa fase di grande uniformità avviene qualcosa di estremamente importante per la storia di Dolomiti. Soon after, the short and stable period comes to an end. And this is a crucial event in the Dolomites history. For the first time in the Triassic, two different marine environments are established. The atolls, with their carbonate platform, are now surrounded by deep sea basins. Waters on the atolls were shallow and their sediments made up of carbonate massives that characterize the Dolomites nowadays. Ai calcarei, alle dolomie massicce, quelle che oggi sono le Dolomiti, le vere Dolomiti, in mezzo abbiamo invece dei bacini profondi anche 500. In between the isles, basins were up to several hundred meters deep and their sediments were very different. Dark well bedded limestones have formed there, like those of the Buchsestein formation well visible on the Seceda summit. Oxygen was almost absent from the very deep bottom, giving this rock the black color and allowing the remnants of some organisms like fishes to be preserved. Here we can see all the collected bones. This was a large animal that could potentially measure 5 meters in length. We can also see that the vertebrae are considerably flattened. Beside fish and the ichthyosaur, the superficial waters were dwelled by ammonoids, whose fossils are commonly found, and they're considered as guide fossils throughout the Triassic. In other words, they allowed to set a date for the rocks where they were collected. <laughs>